Hello, welcome to my fourth and final video of my heavy bowgun guide and this is pretty much just gonna be a recommendation of ways to play plus some useful info about the bowgun stats and ammo types. I don't want to get too into detail about everything because this info is freely accessible and I'm gonna put a bunch of links in the description where you can find motion values, recoil and reload values and weapon info. What you need to know is that Heavy Bowgun prefers raw ammo and preferably shoots common ammo types. So without further ado, let's start by going over the different ammo types. I don't wanna make explaining ammo types too long, so I keep it brief and only explain the useful ammo, but some basic info is required to understand what's going on and why you'd want to use certain ammo types. I will also explain what the uncommon shots might be good for if they are used with a particular gun. Let's start with PS1, simply because it's the best ammo in the game. It pierces through the monster and deals multiple ticks of damage. It has 3 ticks of 9 motion value and the crit distance starts roughly 2 rolls away from the player. The reason this is the best ammo is because it only requires average recoil, has a good total capacity with combines and most importantly, amazing damage while being easy to land or takes worth. Its only disadvantage is that it basically requires shot booster, as its critical distance is really short. You should eat for feline temper on all levels of peers. PS2 has a better critical distance, similar ammo capacity and has 4 ticks. Sadly, it requires some recoil and only deals 7 motion value per tick. And considering PS takes are fairly far apart in this game, it's harder to get all takes in. It's basically worse than PS1 in almost every way, but it's still pretty strong and therefore a good backup or alternative to PS1. PS3 is even harder to hit, as 5 takes is usually completely overkill, but it has niche application since it also has some recoil and deals 7 motion value per tick making its total motion value of 35 worthwhile against very large monsters with equally distributed hit zones, such as Plesioth, Lao Shanlong or Bloated Zamprios. Normal 2 is the basic one, being just a single tick of 12 motion value. It's generally worse than peers due to the total motion value being a lot lower, but it has the advantage of being a single tick and its crit distance starting from the player meaning that it doesn't struggle against monsters that close in often and only have a single good hit zone like Garuga or Teostra. If you're using any normal eat for feline sharpshooter, not only does the decreased deviation help with hitting small weak spots, the damage boost is 10% for normals, making it a better choice than temper. Normal 3 only has 10 motion value, but it's got a gimmick where it bounces off the monster and has a chance to hit again for 10 motion value up to 4 times. The bounces can't be at crit distance and the collision is awful, so they tend to be super unreliable and only useful as backup. Eat for a feline sharpshooter. Pellet works differently from other ammos and not like you'd expect. It looks like a shotgun pellet and it sort of is, but its damage doesn't work like a shotgun. Basically, it shoots an invisible shot that generates a cone around it, and depending on the distance, it deals multiple hits of 5 motion value each. The pellets don't have a crit distance, but the pellet ticks increase at around 2 rolls away up to 4 ticks in the case of pellet 2. It also has a weird mechanic where it chooses the hit zones for you, so it's not suitable for all monsters equally. Amatsu or Xenogre, for example, attract the pellets to their heads, where the best hit zones are, where something like Nerskiller blocks its weak spot with its fangs, which have a worse zone. Generally, it's not really worth it, but it's very comfy to play due to not requiring good aim, and it's good for AoE damage against small monsters. Be aware that it staggers teammates, so be careful if you use it online. Feline Temper applies to all levels of pellet. Pellet 3's difference to 2 is that it requires some instead of average recoil and hits up to 5 ticks. Its ideal distance is also slightly further away at around 3 rolls. Slice is pretty much the best ammo to fill up Vela. 
because it hits 5 times and only the impact has a critical distance. It deals a small initial damage on hit and then 5 ticks of short damage, contrary to its description. It deals 5 and 8 motion value at level 1 and 2. While it does deal short damage, the ability to slice is real, so you can cut tails with it. It's a very powerful ammo, especially for light bowgun, but for our purpose it's just there to fill up valor. It's also an internal ammo, so you cannot bring more of it or unequip it. Your gun either has it or it doesn't. Parashots have a lot of recoil and very slow reload and deal 50 para at level 2. Most monsters will only need 4 shots to get para at once, so using them on guns that can load them may be worthwhile, especially online. You can eat for feline specialists to increase status, but monsters generally have status thresholds of multiples of 50, so it generally doesn't decrease the amount of status shots needed. It does help combating the status decay though. Sleep is more niche, but basically the same as para in the sense that if your gun can load it, it can be worthwhile. Note that most useful heavy bowguns only load sleep 1, which only applies 25 sleep. The last super important ammo is any variation of demon shots. There's a variety of them, but essentially you wanna use any of them for the demon buff itself, because it gives players a sharpness or crit distance modifier for 90 seconds. Blade Masters receive a 10% sharpness mod, while Gunners have their crit distance modifier raised to 170% from 150%. It's extremely strong and should be kept up as much as possible online. Demon S itself also adds plus 10 raw, Demon Affinity adds plus 15 raw and plus 10% affinity, and Demon Armor adds plus 10 raw and plus 20% defense. The effects stack, so if there are multiple different demon ammo types on your team, make sure to use them all. The flat raw buffs override each other though. There's also additional ammos that are niche, so here's what they do even more briefly. Normal 1 is bad, it only deals 6 motion value. Pellet 1 only has 3 ticks, so it's also bad. Crack does fire and fixed damage and has exhaust and KO value, so it can be a niche support option. Feline Bombardier adds plus 15% damage to cracks and Feline Slugger adds plus 10% KO value. If you plan on using a lot of them, they can be useful, but generally it's better to get temper for your main raw ammo. Triblast is basically beefed up crack, but only internal and usually low capacity and clip. Dazzling has no crit distance and deals 35 motion value, which is pretty high. Sadly, it's typically very low capacity. Clust spreads clusters of bombs around the impact of the bullet. They deal 25 fixed damage and a little bit of fire damage and knock people around. They also have horrible recoil and reload, so outside of one heavy bowgun using aerial, it's not really viable on heavy bowgun. The lost Xanadu or God's Isle light bowguns are what you're really looking for when it comes to Clust. Feline Bombardier does not apply to Clust. Element 1 is bad in GU and never worth going for due to its low damage. Element 2 is much stronger, but still not good enough to be particularly useful. The only application I could find for it was breaking certain parts, if you really want them, such as Naga Wings, but don't use them for damage. Dragon does a lot of damage, but its recoil and capacity are atrocious. Generally not worthwhile on heavy bowgun. The Vat Strikes light bowgun is the best weapon for dragon shots. Poison sucks in GU and the damage you get from it doesn't justify not sieging raw instead. Pierce element is pretty strong, but not very useful overall outside of super niche strats due to the capacity. There also aren't a lot of heavy bowguns that can siege them. I'll go over it in the honorable mentions. The rest is unusable in my opinion. I could say a bit about them, but the bottom line is there are no heavy bowguns that can get anything out of them and at best they can be used on light bowgun, which expands past the scope of this video, so maybe some other time. Now we're gonna choose our weapon and set, as well as the hunter arts. 
I deliberately didn't mention them a lot because they might change a lot depending on your needs and wants. So going over them while explaining the setup entirely makes more sense to me. I'm gonna start with the meta Pierce Heavy Bowguns and their playstyles and move on to other noteworthy Pierce Heavy Bowguns, then normal, then other ammo types and honorable mentions. So if you're just looking for the optimal way to play, you can just pick one of the first three or so sets and call it a day. Also, if you're wondering, you want to equip Power Barrel on all of these. There's never a good reason to use Shield on Vela Heavy Bowgun. Not saying Shields can't help you or come in handy, just that it's never necessary due to Heavy Bowgun's already overkill moveset, so I won't recommend it. If you think it helps you though, especially when starting out, by all means use a shield. Let's start with the big ones. Daura Seti and Orcus Quarkus. It's no secret these are OP and they are probably the two heavy bowguns you see the most online and in speedruns for good reason. They come with 4 shots of slice, 5 shots of pierce 1, can siege pierce 1 and have incredible raw and 20 base affinity. The incredible base raw and the fact that pierce 1 is the best ammo in the game are the only reasons these two are so broken. While they are functionally almost the same in the endgame, there are a few small differences that can affect your choice between the two. Orcus Corcus comes with two slots, Slice 2 and Demon Armor, which makes it a little more flexible for set building and better for online play than the Daoras City, because Demon Armor is OP. Daoras City only has one slot and Slice 1, but it has 10 more raw, which makes it the overall best solo heavy bowgun. There are people who will say that Orcus, Thunder 2 and Para 2 Siege make it better, but that's not really true in most cases. Daora can also load two Para 2s and the time lost by having to do one extra power reload is usually not big enough to justify dropping 10 raw outside of very specific speedrun strats. The Thunder 2 internals are also pretty much completely irrelevant unless you absolutely need to break Naga's or Mises claws, so they're at best a niche gimmick. The bottom line is that 10 more raw is 10 more raw, which puts Daora on top as the best heavy bowgun overall. Another important distinction is that Daora's city can be made in low rank, where it will continue to be the best heavy bowgun for a large chunk of the game until maxing out as the best heavy bowgun whereas Orcos has to be crafted from the laggy and regular Xenogra heavy bowgun and it's pretty much completely useless until it's maxed out. So while it's a great late game choice, it's non-existent during progression and demands a lot of optional hyper monster quests to get. So overall, Daora is the best heavy bowgun for damage, but the extra slot, demon armor and additional siege ammos make Orcos slightly more versatile. Personally, I use Orcus online and Daura if I'm solo or if I'm the only damage dealer in my team. Now onto the sets and hunter arts. For hunter arts, you wanna go with mass combiner. Mass combiner makes it so your combines will always give you the highest yield, so it's very useful for conserving ammo to make sure you don't run out. Even if you don't run the risk of running out of ammo, it's a solid pick because the Latchberry consumption is so high that you can't farm enough of them if you combine everything every hunt. So it's good just for conserving Latchberries. You save 60 pierce shots and 20 Latchberries per quest if you use up everything, so it's a pretty solid gain. It also makes it so you always only have to combine 20 times rather than 30 on average, making the combining process slightly faster and you don't need combo books while it's active. Another useful hunter art is guns blazing on the Orcus specifically. The reason for that is that it temporarily sets the recoil to minimum minus one and lets you fire everything recoillessly. This is more of a niche setup and only good online, but you can bring para 2 combines, use guns blazing and siege para to get additional paras. This isn't usually worth it, but it can be on some particularly difficult quests like Snow Baron EX. Gunpowder and fusion is usually not good, because the time spent activating it is a bigger time loss than simply not using it. 
But it has a few niche uses on monsters that have some forced downtime like Ataka or ones that change the area often. Readiness is solid but not really necessary because Heavy Bowgun's base moveset is good enough to never really need it. It can be useful for positioning though. Nothing else is really noteworthy in my opinion, so Mass Combiner is the overall most useful pick. Now onto the set. The skill priority is Pierce Up, Shot Booster, Crit Boost and then more Crit. Weakness Exploit is the overall best skill for Crit, but Challenger, Repeat Offender and Crit Eye are good too. My recommendation for a start would be to just make the NES add and gem and Pierce Up, Shot Booster, Wax and Crit Boost. See if you have a charm with points in any of those skills and slots if possible and gem in what you need. Full Neset is not particularly difficult to farm, you don't have to worry about maxing it out and it's good enough for everything the game throws at you. I also made a set that doesn't require particularly difficult monsters and only requires a triple slot charm, which you can see here. If you have a PS5 or 6 triple slot, the full Silver Soul Z armor is the best overall pick because it adds Challenger 1. Depending on your charm, you can even use the helm instead of the cap for more defense. There's a popular mix set using Hayabusa Feather and Crit I2 that I'm showing right now and it also has a variation with Repeat Offender, but I can't really recommend it because of the Hayabusa Feather. Disregarding that it's a pain in the ass to get, its defense is so horrible that you're regularly putting yourself in one-shot range of a lot of monsters' basic moves, including Hyper Silver Loss, Hyper Devil Joe, Old Fatalis, any G4 Hypers and any Deviants upwards of G4, which make up the majority of endgame grind. By just downgrading one level of Crit Eye on each set, you gain over 100 extra defense and can forego Hayabusa entirely. In the case of the Orcos exclusive Repeat Offender set, you can even, even use Daora Seti with Crit Eye 1 instead, making it equally strong but with 120 more defense. Remember, the DPS of carding is zero. The damage difference between Crit Eye 1 and 2 on these sets is 3%. Just carding once every 30 quests or so makes this damage difference worthless. Additionally, you're also gonna take more Vela damage and reach the one shot range much faster, so you might even have to heal sooner and more frequently. Healing costs about 2 sieges, so assuming you siege around 12 times per quest, just using one more potion every 5 quests is a damage loss on average. This set is never worth it even from a purely efficiency perspective, so I urge you not to use it. In the case of Challenger 1 vs Critite 2, the damage difference is less than 3%, assuming 50% uptime, and using Daora with Crit I1 instead of Orcos with Crit I2 is just a 0.4% DPS loss. Here are my suggested alternative sets using standard charms. And here are various examples of attacks where this defense advantage matters. With all that being said, choose your set according to your needs and make sure to check hit zones. Some monsters have badly accessible or no weak spots and not every monster has good challenge uptime. So make sure to choose between weakness exploit, repeat offender, challenger and crit eye accordingly. And that about covers the Dara and Orcus heavy bowgun, so moving on. The Diablos heavy bowgun is not just a decent alternative to these two, but it's also a great addition to them. While the Orcos and Dora heavy bowguns are the best at shooting PS1, the Diablas Blazooka can siege it too. The main reason why you'd want to use the Blazooka instead is that the Dora runs out of PS1 fairly soon and has no useful backup. It's got enough to finish most single monster and some multi monster quests solo, but it runs out eventually in a lot of quests, especially if you're solo. Therefore, you want to have some sort of backup. The Diablos Heavy Bowgun has not only PS1, but also PS2 and Normal 2 Siege. So it's got three of the best ammo types all in one Bowgun. 
The only problem is that its stats are worse. It may have more raw than the other Pierce guns, but the minus 30% affinity hurt it a lot and it requires recoil plus one to be able to shoot Pierce 2 recoillessly. You're looking at a roughly 10% DPS loss compared to the other Pierce heavy bowguns, but it's usually worth it if you otherwise can finish the quest with just Pierce 1. The core skills for this weapon are Pierce Up, Shot Booster and Recoil 1. What you do after that usually depends on your charms. Bitter Affinity is a great start if you don't have a great charm yet, because it's slightly better than Repeat Offender and Crit I3 at minus 30 affinity. If you manage to stack more than 30 affinity to cancel out the negative 30, more crit or attacks would be better though. Repeat Offender or Weakness Exploit plus Crit I2 or Crit I3 and Challenger 1 or Attack Up S would be decent options and with a good enough charm you can even get Crit I2 or Repeat Offender on top of Weakness Exploit. Ammo Saver can also be worthwhile since you wanna pick it for the long quests and it's an indirect damage increase as PS1 will last you longer, but generally more damage skills are preferable. Another thing you can do is add normal up thanks to the flexibility of Azurian XR pieces to get a bit more out of normal 2 if it's relevant for the matchup in multi monster quests. These sets all require pretty great charms and some of them want higher booster though. So I would recommend against crit stacking, unless you can make a crit stacking set with suitable defense. Use an armor set searcher to find out what you can make and decide what you want based on your charms and preference. But for a start, here's a set you can make using only a triple slot charm that uses weakness exploit to offset the negative affinity, at least on weak spots. It also has more than suitable defense to boot and doesn't require farming any particularly difficult monsters to make. For Hunter Arts, you use Mass Combiner pretty much exclusively because the sole reason for using this bowgun is its ammo capacity, so having essentially double the ammo of Terror's City with Mass Combiner is what you even make this thing for. You can also craft it starting in late high rank, so it's a decent start into G rank and good for clearing high rank quests. And that about wraps up the holy trinity of Pierce Heavy bowguns in GU. You will usually not really need anything else in terms of efficient play, but there are good reasons to use different bowguns depending on what you do with them. The Buster Lancera is the go-to PS2 heavy bowgun. Having solid raw, a massive 40% affinity, natural sum recoil and PS2 siege. While PS2 is definitely worse than one, this bowgun comes with a few advantages that make it worthwhile, especially as a starter heavy bowgun. Its amazing base affinity makes it easy to use with crit boost right away, even without any other affinity boosting skills. You can start crafting it in high rank and it starts sieging peers in early G rank, making it a super accessible and very powerful progression heavy bowgun. Pierce 2 itself also has the advantage that all of its combines can be bought at the trader and don't have to be requested meaning you can instantly buy dozens of stacks and sustain them without using up all three trader spots for ledge berries. Another advantage of PS2 is that it, while it's beneficial, Shot Booster is not mandatory, making it more flexible skill-wise, which is especially useful early on when it might be too expensive for your set. For skills, you basically use the same skills as for PS1 heavy bowguns, but you can skip Shot Booster if you can get something even better instead, or can't get it at all. Just get pierce up and stack crit. For hunter arts, mass combiner is an obvious pick. You can also use void piercer. Buster Lancera can also see to sleep one with medium recoil, so it's quite fun and potentially helpful to use void piercer. It deals shot damage but has the ability to cut tails like slicing ass and has a very high motion value of 170. Basically, you put the monster to sleep and wake it up with a void piercer to the tail to aid tail cuts or on weak spots just to do damage. Another incredibly overlooked heavy bowgun is the Agna Arbalest. It's essentially Daura's CT minus 20 affinity and slice, having the same raw slots and pierce 1 siege. Its niche is that it has pierce flaming level 2 and natural sum recoil which are potentially useful for monsters weak to fire such as Camellias or Ukanlos, and fills up Vela really fast. 
More importantly, it can also siege crack level 3, and although you need recoil down plus 1 to fire it without recoil, it can be useful at times even with a medium recoil. For skills, you want the same skills as the Doros City. I used recoil in my 4 player Bixis Veldstrak script, but that was because it needed to come out immediately without recoil. Generally, I wouldn't bring it just for that unless the Crackstar needs to come out immediately. Instead, I think firing with medium recoil or bringing the Hunter Art guns blazing is more useful. You can just bring level 1 for 1 siege so it fills up faster, as level 3's duration is kinda overkill for Crack's low capacity. Mass Combiner is the other useful art, because it only sieges Pierce 1 as its main raw damage, so having 60 extra shots on average is nice. Another niche option is the Endless Sky. It's similar to the Buster Lancera in that it can siege Pierce 2 recoilessly. It has overall slightly worse stats with minus 5% affinity and only 20 more raw, but it makes up for it in other ways. For one, it can be crafted and sieges Pierce starting in high rank when you first make it, so it's available a little earlier. More importantly though, it has a colorful selection of super useful side ammos. It has Demon Armor S to buff teammates and can siege Para 2 like the Orcus, but it also has Sleep 2 and can fire status shots with lower recoil requirements than other guns. It can double as a Pierce Heavy Bowgun and status gun, especially with Recoil 3 or Guns Blazing to siege Para recoilessly and load sleep, something the Orcos cannot do. It also has the ability to siege Pellet 2, but I would not recommend using it for this purpose, because there are other heavy bowguns that just completely outclass it for this purpose and using status strats mixes badly with Pellet. You don't want to stagger your teammates if the monster is down and Pierce simply does more damage anyway. For skills, bring the same as for Buster Lancera or use Recoil 1 or 3 if you want to capitalize on the Para Siege and Sleep. It also benefits from loadup against matchups that only need 3 shots of Sleep 2, because it has to reload less. For Hunter Arts, bring Guns Blazing if you plan on using a lot of status, or Mass Combiner if you want to primarily Siege Pierce and just use status on the sides. Readiness can be useful to quickly switch to Sleep 2 for status chain strats with recoil sets. Now we're getting into the PS3 guns. As mentioned before, PS3 ticks are kinda overkill most of the time, and considering you can only bring combines for another 60 shots max, it's more of a niche ammo. It's not bad, it's just used for specific matchups. One of the best all round PS3 heavy bow guns is the Ivanus as it comes with pretty good stats and, more importantly, a massive amount of siege ammo. It can siege normal 2 and 3 and pierce 2 and 3, making it the gun with probably the most massive amount of useful raw ammo sieges of all heavy bow guns in the game. It also comes with Demon Affinity S, an extremely strong buff for teammates, making it very useful online. The drawbacks are that it requires recoil down plus 1 to siege pierce 2 and 3, and that the stats while still good, aren't as good as those of some of the other heavy bowguns. It has similar stats to the Diabla Sazuka, but trades 10 less raw for 10% more affinity. For skills I would recommend Pierce Up, Recoil Down 1 and Stacking Crit. Shot Booster isn't particularly useful for Pierce 3, favorable matchups and Bitter Affinity isn't worth it at minus 20% affinity. Weakness Exploit is useful against a select few matchups, but not always worth going for due to the high amount of ticks that pass through weak spots, so Repeat Offender is overall more useful unless you're fighting Blasios or Zamtrios. You can also use Dragonheart if you plan on playing with Feline Heroics, which is a no-brainer against Lao and manageable against Nakakos. For Lao in particular, Normal makes breaking parts in Phase 1 very easy, so you can use it there instead of waiting out Phase 1 after doing enough damage. For Hunter Arts, only Mass Combiner is particularly useful, the other Hunter Arts not so much. The Gravius Giga Scream is a good alternative to the Ivanus. It also requires recoil down plus 1, it has 20 less raw but 20% more affinity, 2 slots and sieges pierce 2 and 3 as well as sleep 1. It doesn't come with normal sieges or demon affinity, 
but thanks to the slots and affinity, it tends to return higher effective raw than the Avernus. Can be used with crit boost, and the sleep one can be used so at times. One particular way it sets itself apart from the Avernus is that it can use crit boost. A particularly noteworthy combination is Repeat Offender or Wax, Crit 2 and Crit Boost. There's a run using the Gravius Giga Scream with Wax and Crit Boost to reach the weak spot of Nakakos with PS3, something PS1 Heavy Bowguns can't do and the Avernus isn't good at. There are also 4 player runs using it to put the monster to sleep in place of a God's Isle. So for skills, use Pierce Up, Recoil 1, Crit Boost and Sources of Crit. Dragonheart can also be useful, but will have to replace crit boost to not drop the affinity too low to get it into the set. For hunter arts, use mass combiner. Destiny's shoulder is basically Gravius Giga Scream, but only for PS3. It has a massive raw of 370 and minus 15% affinity. It sieges PS3 and Flaming 2 and requires recoil 1. Basically, this is the nuke option against monsters like Plesios or Zamtrios, where PS3 is so strong that it can finish the quest with its low capacity purely because the damage is so good. You wanna use this with Recoil 1, Pierce, Wax, Crit Boost and Crit 2. You're gonna be shooting at weak spots like Bloodbath's Tail or Plesios' Belly with this, so don't worry about the negative affinity too much. Mass Combiner is also its best hunter art. Rahorakti has about the same purpose. It's also a pure PS3 sieging heavy bowgun for maximum damage against very big monsters, but it works a bit differently. It trades 20 raw for neutral affinity and has natural sum recoil and 3 slots. Sadly, it's a bit funky, because the attacker bowguns require the use any pierce skill to load higher levels of pierce including its Siege Ammo PS3. While this makes it skill intensive, the slots and fairly cheap decos let it have the same damage skills as Destiny's Shoulder otherwise. It has roughly the same effective raw with Pierce Up, Wax, Crit Boost, Crit 2 and use any Pierce, and also uses Mass Combiner. What sets it apart however is that it can't only gym and Pierce, as it can Siege all level 3 common raw ammos. Normal 3 is irrelevant, so you're never gonna use it. Pellet 3 on the other hand is very interesting due to being better than Pellet 2. Rahorakti is the best heavy bowgun that can siege it and with Pellet up use any pellet, weakness exploit, crit boost and an additional crit skill, it deals a lot of damage with it. It also has slice to fill up Vela and Dazzling as a nice but natural bonus. Now onto the normals. The best normal heavy bowgun is Akanto Descent. It has normal 2, normal 3, PS2 and crack 3 siege and most notably absolutely ridiculous base stats with 340 raw and a massive 40% affinity. This thing has the highest effective raw of all heavy bowguns and a good selection of useful ammos including demon affinity and triblast internals. While it's a great PS2 heavy bowgun, having only average recoil makes it worse than Buster Lancera because having to use recoil generally isn't worth 10 more raw. The real reason to use it is normal 2, because it's the best normal heavy bowgun. There are matchups where you want a single damage tick or the monster simply doesn't let you siege at crit distance of Pierce, such as Garuga or Teostra. The skills you want are normal up, weakness exploit, crit boost and more damage increasing skills. A popular combo is Dragonheart plus Resuscitate, but this requires a god charm. You can use Dragonheart plus Challenger 1 for similar results too. If you don't like Dragonheart, just Challenger 2 is a decent alternative. Depending on your charm, you can also add Combine Pro to not have to use Mass Combiner. And Shot Booster does improve crit distance, but there's not much of a reason to use it because Normal already has a good crit distance and you want to stay up close most of the time anyway so it generally isn't really necessary. For hunter arts, you can take mass combiner, readiness or guns blazing. Guns blazing is particularly useful for tri-blast, crack siege and it can temporarily enable recoilless PS2. I wouldn't say it's worth it to use guns blazing just for the pierce, 
But if a certain monster like Theo or Mizu is knocked out from crack, Pierce might be better in certain situations. Gunpowder infusion can be useful, but only if you have the time to use it. Le Deluge is the second best heavy bowgun, being able to siege Normal 2, Pellet 2, Pierce 2 and Dragon 1. Similarly to a counter descent, it needs recoil for Pierce up, so it's suboptimal for that. It has otherwise about the same stats, but only 30 affinity. It has some nice small advantages such as a slightly higher slicing clip, an extra slot and no deviation. None of these really matter a lot, unless your charm specifically lets you make a better set with a slot, but they're nice to have. It also doesn't come with demon affinity or crack siege, which personally makes me like the Akanta Descent more. For normal, you want the same skills as the Akanta Heavy Bowgun. For Hunter Arts, Guns Blazing doesn't really add much to it, so Mass Combiner or Readiness are its best options. Gunpowder Infusion only if the monster has forced downtime to use it without giving up extra siege time. As mentioned, Le Deluge also has Pellet 2, and thanks to its insanely good base stats and much lower skill requirement compared to Rahuakti, it can be better to use it with Pellet 2 than Rahuakti with Pellet 3. I hesitate to call it outright better or worse, because it's hard to tell how consistently Pellet 3 gets extra ticks over Pellet 2, but they are pretty similar in my experience. For Pellet, you want Pellet Up, Weakness Exploit, Crit Boost, Challenger or Crit Eye, and maybe an additional skill like Combo Pro or Capture Guru if you can fit it. Use Mass Combiner if you don't have Combine Pro equipped, otherwise Readiness or Gunpowder Infusion depending on the matchup. With that, we are through all of the relevant raw heavy bowguns, which are really all you need. I do want to put some honorable mentions here though, because the ones I just talked about were only the best heavy bowguns in the endgame, and because I think there are really cool bowguns that are just as usable. Heavy bowgun is so OP that you can keep up with Blademaster weapons even if you siege normal one only, so any heavy bowgun with decent ammo will be good regardless of its suboptimal stats. That being said, here are some bowguns I think are worth trying out. The hidden gambit is regular Naga's heavy bowgun. It has slicing, good stats and sieges pierce 1 starting immediately in low rank, making it an instantly great heavy bowgun. Unfortunately, its awfully low max raw makes it less interesting for the endgame, but it's one of the best progression bowguns in the game. It's especially great for mid rank progression when you're waiting to upgrade your Daora heavy bowgun, so having it alongside Adoras is a great way to always have a relevant PS1 heavy bowgun available at any rank. It is also the first and only useful PS heavy bowgun you can make in early low rank, so it's definitely worth making if you just started the game. Valia Cannon is a great PS2 heavy bowgun. Unfortunately the recoil makes it generally worse than Buster Lancera, but even with this drawback it can rival it. Its advantages are also that it can siege Pierce starting in high rank when you first craft it, and that it has Pierce Eye Siege, which generally isn't good, but has a few niche uses like Najarala and doubles as backup for some monsters like Diablos. More on Elemental Pierce later. A Marriage Divine is a great Pierce 3 heavy bowgun that comes with natural sum recoil that allows it to stack way more crit than its competitors. Unfortunately, the low raw makes it slightly worse than Destiny's Shoulder in almost every scenario. It can siege Pierce Water 1 though, which is pretty cool. Heroic Seltos Cannon is another great progression bowgun. It's got normal 2 siege from the start and can also siege Pierce 1 starting in early G rank. It's also ridiculously easy to make and it looks really cool, making it an easy pick. Plethios Heavy Bowgun is also an incredible progression bowgun. It starts sieging Pierce 1 immediately when you make it early into high rank, has slice and natural sum recoil. It's also ridiculously easy to craft and max out because it only needs generic Plethios materials and a few common hyper materials. Plethios dies super fast to Heavy Bowgun, so you pretty much always have this at its best available upgrade with very low effort. This is my personal favorite progression bowgun. Camellia's heavy bowgun looks like a decent but suboptimal normal slash pellet siege heavy bowgun, 
until you look at its absurd ammo clips. It has status options rivaling even the God's Isle and in fact can get even higher clip sizes than God's. It can shoot every single status shot with 3 shots or more and even has all cracks. With the load up and guns blazing, you can have a fun time with ridiculous status clip sizes, no recoil and low reload and normal or pellet siege. Ethereal Kalbonifier is more of a troll bowgun. It sieges normal one with decent stats. I mentioned before how you can use normal one, the worst common raw ammo, and still compete with blade masters. And that's the bowgun you do it with. I finished the last village quest advanced ultimate generation with it first try and practical damage tests show that it's about as good as lower tier blade master weapons for me. So even if it's not nearly as good as heavy bowguns with actually useful ammos, I think it's pretty fun to use and a funny showcase of just how OP Valor Heavy Bowgun really is. I didn't plan on including elemental bowguns since they simply aren't as good as raw siege bowguns, but on select few matchups like Ravios they can actually rival or even surpass raw damage. The other reason I don't wanna get too deep into them is because they play totally differently as they generally don't siege Pierce Element 2. However, I'm still gonna mention them here briefly in case someone really wants to know how to use them. Generally, Pierce Element level 2 requires some recoil, which not all bowguns have. True Shot Up is the best skill for elemental shots, as it's a 20% damage boost, followed by the single element plus 2 and element up skills. Recoil is mandatory if the bowgun doesn't have some recoil or better. Crit element and sources of crit can be useful, but only if you don't have to drop anything important to add them. This highly depends on charms. Loadup may also be useful as well as other optional skills like Partbreaker or Earplugs. Pierce up only benefits the raw portion of your damage, so it's generally not worth it. You can use any style with these since you're not required to siege, but Vela still tends to be the most efficient due to the power reload, power run, natural iframes and the Vela sheath, as nothing the other styles offer is more useful overall. So here are my picks for each element. The Yukumu Aura Gun has by far the highest pierce fire capacity, 3 slots and average recoil. It also doubles as a pierce water bowgun. A counter descent trades pierce flaming 1 and the triple slot for 10 more raw and 40% more affinity, making it more powerful and letting it use elemental crit at the cost of having no pierce flaming 1. Agna Arbalest additionally has less Pierce Flaming 2 and no affinity, but comes with even more raw, natural sum recoil and single flaming level 2 siege. The latter two also have, as already discussed, amazing raw siege options. Mountainous Torrid is pretty much the unquestionably best Pierce Water Heavy Bowgun, with huge clip, huge capacity, natural sum recoil, great raw, two slots, and great raw pierce clips and single water 1 and 2 siege for backup. Ikumo Oregon is also useful for water, but not as strong. The brutal trench snuffer can siege pierce water 2, but needs recoil and has pathetically low capacity with no useful backups, making this one less powerful. The Thunder Crash Blaster has natural sum recoil, amazing pierce thunder capacity and clips, and slicing backup. The Vibrant Crasher trades recoil and clip size for natural affinity and single thunder siege backup. The Valia Cannon is the only good ice heavy bowgun by a long shot, having amazing stats, amazing capacity, the ability to siege both PS freeze levels and having a great backup ammo. The recoil requirement doesn't hurt it that much considering everything else on it is simply amazing. For Dragon, no useful heavy bowgun exists. The Visna Cannon and Magnastar Fujik can shoot quite a lot of dragon and have enough recoil to lower it enough with skills to shoot dragon recoilously, but why would you considering you only have a few shots total and no monster will just die from those alone. The Magnastar Lubos Light Bowgun is what you're really looking for if you want to make dragon ammo viable. And that concludes my Valor Heavy Bowgun guide. As mentioned before, any bowgun with decent clip size or siege capacity of useful ammos is good, so don't feel pressure to only stick to my recommendations. 
If you still have questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments and as always, I'm gonna link my resource sheet in the description for further reading. This guide has been a lot of work and I try to put everything I know into it, so I'd appreciate if you'd share it around. Thanks for watching!